Montego Bay in Jamaica is currently my home. I've been living here for almost nine years, but I also know what it's like to be a tourist in Jamaica, as I was one at some point. So with this video, I'd like to share my recommendations for things to do in Montego Bay and things to do in Falmouth, because these two towns are located nearby and you need to take advantage of both. This video is sponsored by you. Thank you so much for the support. So we're gonna start with the obvious, the beach. There are 18 public beaches in Montego Bay and you can visit all of them if you wish. Some have entrance fees, some are free, but I'm going to list just the ones that I personally like to visit the most. So of course Dr. Scave Beach is one of the best beaches in Montego Bay as well as actually one of the best in the Caribbean, so definitely have to visit that one. It's especially good if you want to spend the whole day on the beach because Dr. Scave has all the facilities, it also has restaurants and bars on the beach. The downside is that because this beach is rather popular, especially on cruise ship days, it can get quite crowded. So some people might find it not so suitable. So I have another option for you guys. If you don't want to pay an admission fees, but also have a nice free beach, I would suggest to go to Harmony Beach Park. It is a really nice place that they're built for the locals and foreigners alike. They also have all the facilities such as showers and bathrooms and all of that. The advantage of Harmony Beach Park is that it also has a parking lot, whereas Doctor's Cave doesn't really have any parking space available, which makes it difficult for those who come by car. If you're staying in Falmouth or that side of Montego Bay, the best beach for you would actually be 876 Beach Club. I personally really prefer 876 Beach Club simply because it's somewhere in between the local beach and something more, uh, you know, with facilities and convenience, especially if you're going with kids that can be pretty cool stuff there because they also have these water bouncing things in there. If you're staying in Montego Bay or Falmouth, it is your chance to visit a great house. The most popular one is Rosal Great House that also runs this night tour when you can go and uh, search for ghosts. But I would personally recommend Greenwood Great House because it's one of the best museums in Jamaica and it is located close to Falmouth. Greenwood Great House is the best preserved and the most authentic plantation house in Jamaica with a lot of original artifacts authentic historical books and a breathtaking view from the top veranda. Greenwood Great House has a very interactive tour, so this is something that for people especially who are interested in history, you might find um, definitely worth your time and money. Jamaica's famous Bamboo River rafting. There are actually two locations where you can do it from Montego Bay of Falmouth. There is Martha Brer River rafting located near Falmouth at beautiful Martha Brer River that goes through the rainforest. The excursion includes a historical tour for over an hour. And on the opposite side of Montego Bay, there is Great River rafting. The river is slightly wider, not as covered with rainforest, but has a stunning view of the old bridge. And this is where some people also like to get limestone massage. Both Martha Brer and Great River Rafting have about the same prices. They charge per raft and the raft can usually hold up to two adults. Luminous Lagoon, also known as Glistening Waters. It's a mystical experience that people can check out only in a few places in the world, and Jamaica is luckily one of them. It is located close to Falmouth, and it's a night tour, which is available after sunset from around 6.30 p.m. At the location, a boat will take you out in the bay, where you can swim in the glowing water at night, marveling at how glittery your skin becomes. Luminous Lagoon in Jamaica is unique because although bioluminescence phenomenon can be observed in different parts of the world, in Jamaica it is one of the brightest and you can observe it every night, while in other places it's often seasonal. 
problem with Luminous Lagoon is its location. It's kind of far from most places and it's also an evening attraction so it's a bit tricky to get there so you need to either have your own car and drive at night or uh, you can book a tour with different tour operators. <laughs> Another unique experience that you can do only in Jamaica is feeding the Dr. Bird. One of the best places for that is Rockland's Bird Sanctuary, which is located just outside of Montego Bay. Dr. Bird is the national symbol of Jamaica. It is indigenous to Jamaica, where it is the most widespread member of the hummingbird family. And it is one of the most spectacular amongst all hummingbird species. This experience is best done in the morning. It's great as family activity and absolutely must for anyone who loves birds. For more information, feel free to watch our full video about Rocklands and check the links in the description to book the tour. If you're coming to Montego Bay, I strongly advise to visit a local market and downtown. You can see that Montego Bay has its own marketplace that is located close to Barnett Street and then Falmouth has its own marketplace. So you can choose between the two depending on which side of Montego Bay you're staying and have a look at the local market, buy some fruit and in general get some interesting feel of the local community. You see, these places are usually the places where tourists never go because I don't know why. I, I mean, they're, they're probably told it's not safe or something. Well, I go to the market to buy my vegetables and fruits, so I don't ever feel unsafe there. But if you're worried about your safety and want to feel more comfortable going into a local market, you can always take your Jamaican friend with you or get a tour to a local market so that you would have a professional guide with you. If you enjoy snorkeling, you definitely need to check Secret Reef, which is located at this part of Montego Bay. It has absolutely beautiful corals and lots of fish. If you are lucky, you might also see eagle rays and various other marine life. You can access Secret Reef for free from Secrets Resorts in Montego Bay, but for everyone else, you can only access it from a boat. But this snorkeling tour is available with various companies. Now for diving, um, there are several companies that run diving tours. Uh, one of the good ones is Dressel Divers. It's an international company and they do party courses and of course you can get the equipment from them if you already have a party license and you can go, um, they will take you on the boat out to do diving. Different locations around Montego Bay, the Widowmaker's Cave is uh, probably one of the spots that you would want to visit if you are a um, qualified diver, an experienced one. Uh, but other than that, there are just beautiful reefs that you can check out with diving. If you want to go in the sea on a boat, there are several options for you. One is, of course, glass bottom boats. These are just small boats where you can just look down and look at the little reef that they can take you over. I can't say you can see that much with a glass bottom boat, but it's still pretty awesome experience if you've never tried it before and if you don't live by the sea. So you can get glass bottom boats from the beaches located along the central part of Montego Bay. But the other options for you is a catamaran cruise. This is something that is a very popular attraction among tourists but don't expect this to be some romantic getaway for sunset or something like this it's usually a party boat something more for people who want to enjoy the music and dancing and partying now for those who don't like all the you know crowds and everything like this your option might be a sailing boat and actually Montego Bay is the only place where you can buy a private sailing trip Sailing is not something extremely popular in Jamaica and that's why people who are coming and want to go sailing, you know, um, the options are pretty limited. So I will leave the information in the description, but just so you know, if you want to do sailing in Jamaica, Montego Bay is the place to do it. 
And of course, fishing. Fishing charters are available from hotels and with private companies. You have the options of doing big game fishing, trolling or deep sea fishing. Some companies offer to combine the two and the fishing trip can take half day or full day. Like everywhere in the world, such type of fishing is not a cheap experience. But there are quite a few options in Montego Bay to choose from. I will leave the links for the company that I prefer when I go fishing. Horseback riding and swimming with horses is another popular experience among visitors in Jamaica. The thing is, though, there is only one center that offers such activity in Montego Bay itself. It's at Half Moon Stables. This is an equestrian center for locals as well to improve horse riding skills, but the tourist activities are also available there. At TripAdvisor and Google, you can find a lot of adverts for swimming with horses and riding as a part of Montego Bay combo packages. Also include things like ATVs, zip lining and river tubing. However, please keep in mind they are not actually located in Montego Bay, but using the name of the town for the marketing purposes. In reality, they are either in Sandy Bay or in the hills across from Falmouth, both about one hour drive from the center of Montego Bay. Their location is not a problem, but it's important to know because if you are booking any such combo packages, it's best not to plan anything else for the same day because you won't have the time to do it. All the things that I've mentioned so far are the places that tourists visit from time to time, but there is one place where tourists always go when they come to Montego Bay, and that's the so-called hip strip. There are different names for this street. Google has the name Gloucester Avenue, and I'm not quite sure if this pronunciation is right because I never actually heard Jamaican people using it. <laughs> Instead, the locals call it Bottom Road. And now the sign would say Jimmy Cliff Boulevard, uh, though Google Maps doesn't understand it's a Jimmy Cliff Boulevard. So anyway, for the purpose of this video, we will refer to it as Hip Strip. It's just a street in the center of Montego Bay uh, where uh, there are a lot of souvenir shops. There's Dr. Scave Beach is located there. And at the end of Hip Strip, you would find Find how many beach parks now. There are also restaurants and cafes in that area. The issue with Hip Strip is that it's touristy. And like all touristy places, it means some things are quite overpriced and you will definitely encounter hassling. In Jamaica, it's not really a problem. If you don't need what's being offered to you, simply say no thank you and carry on walking. Now, what about waterfalls or visiting Bob Marley's house or some caves and well, we don't actually have any of these things in Montego Bay or Falmouth. There are quite a few YouTube videos who are really misleading. Like you would see top 15 things to do in Montego Bay, but they would actually list things that have nothing to do with Montego Bay. Like they would say, oh, go to Green Grotto Caves, oh, go to Downs River Falls. But these are not in Montego Bay. These are close to Ocho Rios, which is two hours drive from Montego Bay. Why is this a problem? Well, we have guests asking us things like, oh, can I do Rick's Cafe and then go to Downs River Falls on the same day? No, you can't because they're in different directions. It's two hours drive in that direction and two hour drive in the other direction. You can't do them in the same day. It's just not worth the time and it's gonna be very expensive for the transport. But as a bonus thing, I'd like to add that the thing you can do in Montego Bay is to take a day trip outside of Montego Bay. For instance, you can do a day trip to Negril and visit several locations there. Then on a different day, you can do a day trip to Ocho Rios and you know, visit several locations there. There will be a separate video for each of these locations so you can look at the attractions there and then see if you want to do a day trip from Montego Bay to that town. Thank you so much for watching. If you have found this video interesting, don't forget to share it with somebody who's planning a trip to Jamaica and give it a like if you found it useful. And the special thanks are to our patrons for their continued support. They're the ones who allow me to contribute my time to creating these videos. If you also wish to join them and add your contribution to our YouTube project financially, you can do so for only five US dollars per month. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.